Alright, so today we have a physics question of the day and it's asking a roller coaster starts at the top of 100 meters above ground and it's going at 10 meters per second. It drops to ground level then goes into a 10 meter diameter loop. How fast does it go at the top of the loop? And assume this is frictionless. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to always draw a picture. So this is what the picture should look like. Um, so it said that we were at 100 meters up above the ground um, and we were moving 10 meters per second. The cart was moving 10 meters per second. Um, and then we see here that this loop has a 10 meter diameter and they want to know what the final velocity is at this top of the peak of the, of the loop. Um, so how do we solve this? Well. What we're going to use is something called the law of conservation of energy. It says that potential energy plus kinetic energy um, minus the frictional force is potential energy final and kinetic energy final. And all this is saying is that the total energy in the beginning is the same as the total energy at the end. It's always conserved. All right? So how do we do this? Um, so if we look at this right here, uh, we remember that potential energy is mgh, right? So mg, and it's starting off at a height of 100 meters. And then kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And since v, we start off at 10 meters per second, 10 squared. And it was frictionless, so we say it's minus 0. Um, and so the final potential energy is going to be mg and 10 meters. Um, and one half m, and then v is what we're trying to find, right? Uh, so you may ask, oh, what? Well, did it matter if we knew the mass of the cart? Did it make a difference? Did it matter how many people were on there? So the answer is no, because we see that there's an m in every single term. We don't even need to worry about the m. Um, so let's just work this out. So this would be 50 plus 100 g minus 10 g equals one half v squared. Um, so this would be, uh, let's see, 1,000 plus 50 minus 100, and then that whole thing times 2 equals V squared. All right, so now what would that be? That would be, let's see, 1,900 equals V squared, and then V equals 10 square root 19. If you remember uh, from how we actually solved this is square root of 1,900, it's the same thing as square root of 19 times the square root of 100, right? Because 19 times 100 is 1900, and that's how we got 10 square root 19. So just brush up on this. Very, very simple, but um, some of us tend to forget that. So 10 square root 19, and if we look back at our, our question, we see that 10 square root 19 is this choice right here. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.